and buy them rock gold. Hmm. So, right now we are coming right to you live as uh, Jacob Bao, who is playing on the right the new high tide list for Legacy. His opponent, Mike Teresi, I believe, is playing a Rafik the Many mythic style deck. I'm not sure if it's a mythic conscription style deck or just a pure kind of mythic aggro style deck or bant. And I'm sure he's got some uh, legacy goodies in there, like some Trigon Predators. Right, right. Some, like Pride the, Mage has a lot of value in a format like this. Those banty um, kinds of cards that just yes. give you some advantages. Oh, wow. Elspeth as well. So really wow. what this sounds to me is like it is the um, regionals of... Um, two years ago kind of bant. Yep, Shorecrasher Mimic. Maybe not with Shorecrasher, <laughs> though that might belong in the deck, but that yep. kind of regionals moment where Rafik, Elspeth, and, uh, you know, some suspects that were pretty powerful, like Rox Wormonk, would all be shoved in the same deck. Now, we were talking about yesterday how extended is super standard. Well, Legacy is not super standard. Legacy, Legacy is certainly not, certainly super, not standard. Standard. super standard. But what may be possible is that you could take a super standard deck and then juice it up with the cards like Force of Will. Exactly. And I'm sure there are plenty of ways to find, like, different ways to gain huge advantages here. Last night, some people were discussing how to build a Pyromancer Ascension deck, and cards like Regrowth came to mind. Yeah. And that just seems absurd to me. There's Jacob Bao. I'd be curious to speak to him after the match, depending on... Um, actually, either way, if he wins or he loses, speaking to him about his card choices. And uh, for those of you that aren't aware of uh, what Time Spiral does, Time Spiral is a time twister that costs six, and when you cast it, you untap six lands. So High Tide makes all of your lands tap for... all of your islands tap for an additional blue mana. So you actually net mana off of the Time Spiral. So not only do you draw a new hand of seven cards, but you actually ritual up and double the amount of mana in your mana pool every time you do it. So you find it, and then you have four Ponder, four Preordain, and four Brainstorm. So then you use that to find another Time Spiral and just keep going. You also have four Merchant Scroll. So like once you Time Spiral, it's very difficult to not just make it through your entire deck. His goal is cast Time players. Spiral, and when he does that, he probably wins. Two more players and a casual draft can fire. Come on down to side events if you want to draft. I like that he cracked the fetch line in his first turn. He, uh, he doesn't know what his opponent's playing, and uh, he wants to play around Stifle. Well, I think he's also probably going to preordain or ponder here. Okay, so he's pondering also. Yeah, I mean, this but is a deck as that's as a rule of thumb, that's that's a good idea. I agree with that. Yeah, um, Legacy is one of those formats. It's not quite as potent as um, you know Type One, but essentially, a lot of times you're well rewarded for doing things right away rather than waiting. For example, if you cast a Brainstorm in the early turns on the main phase, like say a turn five Brainstorm main phase, can often be better than waiting because you can draw into something so good that you want to cast it right away. And Ponder and Preordain are cards that you don't really mind casting on turn one, whereas Brainstorm is something that... Yeah, Brainstorm is a card you, a lot more you prefer to wait on. Game. But the fact of the matter is that with that Brainstorm that you cast later in the game, it's often better to cast main phase than to rely on it as an um, instant at end of turn. Agreed. It's usually good to combine it also with a fetch land. If you have, if you have an untapped fetch land in play, you can cast the Brain Freeze, take two of the cards that you don't want from your hand, and then put them back on the top of your library, crack your fetch land, and then... You have fresh cards on the top of your library. Yeah. So, okay, so we noble have hierarch. Noble Hierarch. Sure. Maybe the dual lands are just enough to make that man deck. Sure, sure. You know, if yeah. dual lands are really exciting, it. you get real duels. And with yeah. real duels and with the various different fetch lands, your mana has got to be so rock solid that all of the concerns that you had in the old standard version of that Bant deck kind of evaporate. I agree. I mean, even in the face of Wasteland, I think your mana is probably very powerful. 
I, I'm worried for a Gaddock Teague here, but he does nothing. Cycling a Sprite. The cloud, um, <coughs> cloud of fairies. Draft open number two players. Your Stink round two deck. players are now being posted. It's kind of funny that I've been so trained by Draft fairies that I think of cloud of fairies as a sprite. <laughs> like my nut, my uh, my general reaction just to call the two casting cost fairy. Okay, one, two, three. Rock Swarmonk. Rock Swarmonk. Now, Rock Swarmonk has a lot of value against Zoo decks in this format. It's really good at playing Wild Nicodles, especially if you're playing Noble Hierarch in your deck. Right. It forces them to either use a removal spell on the Noble Hierarch, or you threaten them with a 3 4 lifelink. We don't have a, a deck list in our hands of uh, the Mike Teresi deck, but I'm curious if there's a Daze or if there's anything like that that he has, uh, besides perhaps probably Force of Will, to try to fight opponents that are acting, you know, against him. It's a pretty common ploy for this style of deck to have days. Yeah, I'm almost sure that he's got to have Force of Will. Oh, well, he's got to have four Force of Will. But the question for my mind is days, maybe some spell pierces, kind of mimicking a uh, Merfolk style sideboard or a um, Merfolk style counter spell package. So he does have days. He has three days in his deck and four force of will. He also has four swords and one path. He actually wanted the fifth swords that bad. He, he's only playing three brainstorm, and he has four noble hark, two birds, four rock swarm monk, four cold eyed selkie. Cold eyed selkie. That is a monster. In this matchup, Imagine hitting Rafik. Oh my god! Just actually even being as simple enough as laying it on turn three, like an Ophidian, could be really problematic. Particularly after he boards in um, counter spells and spell pierces from the board. And then just even with the turn two noble hierarch cold eye selkie, that just sounds vicious. Very strong. For those of you who aren't aware, cold eye selkie is the merfolk that uses hybrid simic simic one for its mana. It's a one one. Island walk. And when it hits, however much damage it deals, you draw that many cards. So, if you have a Rafik in play and you're double striking after the Exalted Trigger, you're drawing four cards when that guy hits. And he's unblockable against the majority of decks in this format. People like their islands. And now we have the fifth mana. Um, I'm going to see a high tide turnabout time spiral. It's good. The tide is on one. He puts four mana into his pool, casts turnabout. So he's four floating after that? He has four floating now. Okay. Now he's up to eight. Eight goes down to six. And remember, he has five untapped islands right now, so he has access to 16. Emrakul. Cool. Emrakul. Cool. That's pretty good. And, uh... That's gotta be it. Yeah. I'll take my next turn, and I'll nuke your board. Wow! <laughs> wow! Well, that was very interesting. I was totally expecting uh, <laughs> oh, wow. some storm there. Okay, so I think I have a new deck. This is inspired by Rashad Miller. Rashad says, why do we have time spirals in this deck? We why not just, just four Emrakuls? <laughs> <laughs> wow! That was awesome. <laughs> that was, that was really, really, awesome. really awesome. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 and this guy is 4 out. Like this is this is uh, not like a yeah. fluke. We didn't this go and is... cherry pick this guy from the middle of the field. Yeah. <laughs> he's this is somebody uh. who's risen to the top. He has no buys. <laughs> he's working his way up, and he's crushing it with this. And it, I've never. And this is this is very original. I am I'm uh, pretty pumped about this deck. I'm not gonna lie. Uh. <laughs> I think I think I might have just jumped ship on any legacy deck that I had in my head before. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm on board. Who wants I, Who wants brain freeze? We can play more Emrakuls. I'm 100% serious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is Adrian Sullivan here for Star City Games Live, bringing you live coverage of the Kansas City Legacy Open Series. And I'm Jacob Van Lunen.
And we're here, we're watching round five. Yep, round five. We have Jacob Bao, who's piloting an awesome Time Spiral High Tide deck that kills people with him, Rock Will the Eons Torn. Yeah. And, you know, he did a turn five kill there, which is not lightning fast for a combo deck. But in the process of doing that, he has Force of Wills, he has Cunning Wish to get other counter spells, a large number of library manipulation. He can kind of play a little controlling until he goes for the kill. And honestly, I think it's possible for him to go for the kill on turn three. Two. He's got Cloud of Fairies. Oh, you're right. Yeah, because of Cloud of Fairies, it's possible. It's not likely. But it's possible for him to go turn to Emrakul. It's actually risky as well. It's very risky. That's one of the things you that you learned. Very yeah, often, one of the so. things you learned back in the day with High Tide is it's better to wait a turn most of the time. It's like elves. It's very similar to elves. <laughs> I will play first. Yeah. <clears throat> Figured I'd go through the formality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, Mike it's Teresi. Looks like. Oh, what I'm happened to me? Yeah. I just like can't believe cards, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More on the draw than one play. He realizes why he's in a feature match. Right. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> and you know, one of the great things about Emrakul is if you're playing against a deck like, say, the um, the reset builds of High Tide that people tend to call Solidarity, your Emrakul keeps you safe from brain freeze. Yeah. I actually am definitely thinking that two or three Emrakul. Wow. <laughs> you know? The other thing is that uh, people sideboard in Brain Freeze against you. And they can't kill you with it. Like, it doesn't matter how much you storm. Like, if you have an Emrakul left in your deck, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and the thing is, if you draw the Emrakul at any point... Brainstorm it back in. And you don't even... Not even what? brainstorm it back in, you just cast it. <laughs> right? Not, well, not if you've got a draw spell in the stack, right? Well, I guess you have to draw for your next turn also. Yeah. Right, so... No, you have to you have to get it back in your deck so or have a second Emrakul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. You should play a second one. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I hear that card's kind of good. Yeah. I'd be much more interested um, if we get a chance to see this deck later today in seeing how Jacob Bao would do against a deck like Merfolk, which is perhaps a little bit faster out the gate than this deck is. And um, aside from that, is packing a few more counter spells. Wow, cool die, Saki. That, that is a monster in this matchup. It's a very good card here. Jacob certainly has some islands. <laughs> so we are in round five right now. And just a quick recap, we have currently had eight different archetypes show up in the five feature matches that we've done. And that wasn't by design. That was just the nature of how Legacy works right now. Which is really just a testament to how wonderful the format is. And the banning of survival is just such a great thing. Like, it used to be that, like, as the tournament progressed, you'd just see like more and more survival decks because the survival decks would just do better than all the other decks. They're just more powerful. And now that that card's gone, we can really see like a diverse format. We see like all these beautiful decks that, like, clearly like these are people's decks. People made these decks. Both of these players, this is something they created, and that's great. And that's great for the game. And here comes the Selkie. Maybe with a little help, maybe not. I personally am fine with just drawing one card. It depends what he has in his hand, obviously, but, you know, even saving up the bluff of extra counter spells, I would like just to buy more time. Two-headed giant sealed players, when you finish your match, fill out the match results slip. And please bring it back That's up time to the side event stage. To a giant, please bring your match results list back up when you're done to the yep. side event stage. Now, one of the things that high tide decks of yesteryear had as advantages over other decks is they could often play for an out mana turn, 
and sure. with only 17 lands and only four force of wills to really fight a basic counterspell war. This high tide deck is definitely more on the uh, beat down plan than a control plan. It's true. Now, Mike almost certainly has spell pierces now. He may have been slow rolling that night. Or get an extra, uh, you know. He may have just wanted the extra card off the selfie. Okay. Uh, the Jacob first Bao actually does not have back to basics in hand. He is not playing that card in his deck. I believe that's a force of will. Now we can see that if this high tide resolves, it's going to be, I believe, uh, six mana versus two mana. And it looks like it resolved. That's going to usually be all she wrote. More often now, than not. A lot of people like to say that if you uh, have a time spiral, you'll just refill your opponent's hands with counter spells, with force of wills, with you know all of those cards. But the thing to remember is you're refilling your own hand with similar cards. It's true. And actually, interestingly enough, by casting these two high tides, Mike has counter spells in his sideboard, which he may have brought in. And now those counter spells can be cast off his one land there. Yeah, he's got access to three blue mana right now. Yeah. Like he could actually counterspell, still have blue floating, and use it for spell pierce. He even spell pierce counterspell. <laughs> and that looks like it's a fourth high tide. So now he has access to blue, 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 blue with his single tundra. Well, <laughs> he is. Uh, Let's see what happens. So he has five mana remaining and access to 12 more. Shuffles his graveyard hand and library together, and then they draw seven new cards. Now, one of the things, in the old um, high tide decks of yore, it was very easy to find singletons in the deck. And with this deck, it runs even more library manipulation. So it's even easier to find your one Emrakul. It's a... Uh, it's very strong, and a lot of people are looking at his land count and being a little wary of playing 17 lands. In the same way, you really don't want to be time spiraling into lands. Like, it's disastrous, so... Most of the lists we saw with Patrick Chapin's build of this deck were explore lists, and that's an interesting concept. I'm not sure if it's exactly the way you want to be going, but it's definitely a, a very interesting way to kind of mimic thawing glaciers without actually playing thawing glaciers. Now, uh, Chigabao has uh, another high tide. One floating high tide. Wow, the tide is at five. So now there's uh, and he's going four off. mana left in... Uh, <coughs> left in his pool, and he has access to 16 more here. I see a Cunning Wish in his hand. Uh, okay. I see a, Murf or a, a Merchant to... Scroll. Five, cast a Merchant Scroll. Five. That's probably going to find a uh, this is Time Spiral, perhaps a... Uh, you can't uh, Merchant Scroll for Time Spiral. It's only instance, right? Yeah. Okay, so he could get a uh, Cunning Wish, perhaps. Maybe his Brain Freeze. And Mike Teresi is just kind of waiting for the end here. Even if he drew, I believe the uh, the best set of cards he can include have Force of Wills and Counterspell. And all it's going to take is a Brain Freeze to stop this from uh, being at all valuable. There's the Brain Freeze. I mean, most of his library is now going to be gone. Looking for the following players who have signed up for standard winner box number three. Scotty Kelly. So he cunning wished Michael for a brain Fraser, freeze there. So he, he does have other ways to win besides the Amrock Bowl. He can do this Scottie old school Kelly, solidarity style. Fraser, and there's a force of will for the cunning wish, which is dispelled. Did he remove a card in his hand from the game with that force of will? Oh, uh, yeah, he did. Wow. There's a second brain freeze. That should be more than enough to take care of the rest of that library. I wish I had something five. <laughs> wow, and that's all she wrote. 
I'll fail to draw. Okay. <laughs> that is pretty awesome. I'm impressed. I, I really want to see this guy go deep. This is something completely new for me. Yeah, I wasn't sure. It was it was irrelevant because you had the force. Okay, so um, a, a quick 2-0 for Jacob Bao to put him at 5-0 in this eight-round event.